We know that in the last video, we said we'll tell you how to write a proof in this video. We promise we'll get to that at some point, but before you can write a proof, you have to know how to solve a problem. The philosopher Plato once said, a good beginning is more than half of the whole. That means that starting something well is often the hardest part, and in maths, this is often the case. When you see a hard problem, it's easy to just throw up your hands and say, I give up, flips table. We scratch our heads and ask, how do you even approach this problem? Here at Enzymosa, we want to help you with this task. So, here we go. There's no one technique solves all in maths, or anything really. But we can give you one big piece of advice. Here it is. Try something first. No, try lots of things. There aren't really that many people who would think, aha, I know exactly what to do as soon as they see a problem. In fact, modes of math and everything is done sitting down, staring at something, and thinking of lots of different ways you might attack it. So here, in more specific terms, is the first step of every problem. Get a feel for the question. If it's a game, play it for yourself, play against yourself. If it's a pattern, try to describe it first. How do you get from one number or picture to the next? There are so many other possibilities that we can't list them all, but you pick these up along the way as you work your way through the land of math and problem solving. Let's look at a well-known example that we actually touched on in our previous video. There are six people at a birthday party. Each pair of people is either friends or enemies. It doesn't really matter, but let's say people are friends by drawing a pink line between them, and enemies by drawing a green line. There is something very interesting about this arrangement. No matter what people are friends and enemies, there will always be a triangle of friends, a triangle of enemies, or one or more of both. Pause the video right now, get a piece of paper, and try it yourself. Remember the advice. First step, try things. In this case, we're going to draw some more arrangements. I'm going to run out of paper at this point, so I'm only going to draw one here. But really, you should draw as many as you need to get a better idea of what is really happening. Let's be stubborn and pretend that the question is wrong. So we rebel and try our best to avoid making triangles of the same color. I can't put a green line here without making a triangle. So it has to be a pink line. And then this one must be green, this one pink, and so on. And hmm, interesting. Let's approach this more systematically. Every person has to form five links, either friendships or enmities, pink or green. So for this one person, what if they're all pink? Well, nothing seems wrong yet, does it? Stare at it for a bit. Wait, the link between two and three can't be pink, or we'll have a pink triangle, so it must be green. And then the same for three and four, four and five, five and six, and even two and four, and... Uh -huh. We have already forced a green triangle. Very, very interesting. Throughout this whole process, you have to keep asking questions to yourself. How many pink lines do we need before we can force one of these triangles? What if we say that person 1 has three or more friends, just randomly, as a random guess? Well, we know that there will be at least three pink lines, but the order that we put these lines doesn't actually matter. Whether we put the pink lines at the top, bottom, or scatter around, it makes no difference whether or not we will make pink or green triangles. Also, these two links at the bottom don't actually matter. They could be either pink or green. So let's focus on the top three. Like before, we can't have pink from two to three, three to four, or from four to two. So we must all be green, and voila, a green triangle. Remember to keep recapping. What have we just done? We've shown that even if one person has three or more friends, there will be a triangle of either friends or enemies. You won't believe at this point how close we are to the full solution. Just one last question to ask. What if that person doesn't have three or more friends? Well, each person has five links, and not having three or more friends means having two or fewer friends, which means having three or more enemies. We can actually repeat the same steps as above and show that in this case, we also force the triangle of either three friends or enemies. Really, that's all there is to solving a problem. And now, it's time to write the proof, but that's for a later video. 
So back to the point of this video. I've had to keep this short, so I couldn't explain the entire thinking process, so if it seems like I was making superhuman moves and thoughts at every step, don't worry. Those steps took me lots of practice and time to find. But keep this in mind, there's no only one path to the answer, so if you tried things, you'll probably eventually stumble across the solution. You'll find yourself faced with failure, sadness, and the feeling that you've wasted hours of your time. But every failure is an opportunity to learn more about the problem, so really, no valiant attempt is a waste of time. But how do you get better? How do you learn from your mistakes and from your triumphs? Well, one way is to write down neat tricks, realizations, moments of insight you've picked up from every problem. Go through this video again and pick out the key steps we've made. Make sure you learn from every problem. It's something that I wish I'd been taught much, much earlier in my problem solving career. In future videos, we'll talk about some special problems and proofs that highlight more aspects of the problem solving thought process, how to actually write these proofs, background knowledge that will help you with solving problems, and specialized techniques that make certain problems easier to solve. This video was brought to you by Enzo Mosa in collaboration with the University of Auckland. If you like this video, check out some of our other videos on our YouTube channel, like our Facebook page, follow our Twitter. If you have any questions, comments, complaints, message us through Facebook or email us at enzimosa at outlook.com. If you want some more maths goodness, have a look on our site, enzimosa.org.